Hello folks, this has gone spy, the spy, and we're finally going to approach to the first episode of Act 3 of the Star Wars Nice for Public. I thought about a lot about from that last episode and it was pretty breathtaking and pretty shocking of of how I, my creation, be Dorf Revan. The one-time hero and gone to villain and w when I think about it after encountering the star maps especially back at the forest and Kashyyyk it makes perfect sense of what that droid was doing it's been programmed by Revan or me in this case to evaluate on the on me to see if its previous user is actually the case it was actually about rain between me and my darker self. And the other fact is, is that I've well, from now on, things are about to get really intense. From now on, and a lot of things that uh, that I can only believe what I done and during during the war when I was Darth Revan and it explains a great detail why the Jedi Masters begging Dad to Wayne was keeping it a secret I'm just going to have to figure out how to be able to process how to deal with this it's not easy, it's not pretty, but at least the people that troubles with me trusted me. And I don't blame Carr for not still trusting me. I'm not sure if I can trust myself. But I'm going to have to. But I haven't heard from what Johanny said about me. I'm pretty sure she has a lot of questions. Do you want to talk? Uh, what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal. If he's alive, there's just nothing else I want to think about. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could, it would be a huge load off my mind. That's right. Carve asks us to search for Dustal at the Korriban. Well, we're going to have to go to the Korriban anyway, since it's the last place to search for the last storm map. So for now, we're just getting some supplies to Tatooine before we head out. Thank you, Johnny, and I regret any of the harm I may have caused in your life if I have done so. It is good to know that you have truly changed. It gives me hope. I do not think now that I will fall to the dark side. I only have to look at you and follow by your example, and there is no way I can fail. <laughs> You'll do fine, Johnny. Thank you for placing your confidence in me. I only wish I had your help. Maybe we could talk about it of what exactly I did for you. But for now, thank you for the talk, Johnny. What do you feel about me being Darth Revan? Thank you. Thank you, Sawbar. It means a lot hearing that from you. I have some questions. Uh, but uh, you don't even know what I was going to ask. <laughs> Alright, just chime in if you have any advice. And thank you for sticking with me despite what I used to be.
Jolie, we need to talk. I do have something on my mind. Do you want to talk about that war now? Not particularly. You said tell me later, so this is like no time like the present and sort of thing. I suppose you're going to nag me until I cough it up, aren't you? Nothing is private anymore, it looks like. Uh, there's no escaping it, I guess. So be it. My wife's name was Niyama. She was the Yukatis enforcer who shot me out of the sky, if you remember. Right. But I still don't get why your wife has anything to do with the war. My wife had plenty to do with the war. Upon meeting her, I knew right away that she was strong in the force. That's why she was able to shoot me down. Niyama was a fact. marvel of a woman. Fiery, determined, smart. She dragged me to the capital and foiled three of my attempts to escape prison. <laughs> Um, sorry, um, the war? Well, yes, that. Needless to say, I eventually won her over. That was after I kidnapped her of her being broken out of the Yukata's prison, mind you. All right. But, uh, that's another story entirely. Uh, anyway, yeah. I wanted to train her in the Jedi way. The council refused my request, naturally. I was still a Padawan at the time. I was an experienced Padawan, surely, but not yet ready to be. A full Jedi, and certainly not ready to train enough, but especially not one so old as my wife. So, in other words, you disobeyed the council, like I did when I was Revan? I did. I wasn't the first, and I won't be the last. The problem with self righteous folk is they think they're more right than everyone else. I believed in her and trained her in secret, I ignored her willful nature. I loved her too much to see fault in her. She loved me too. I know she did. At the time, our love was a shared bliss. Better than anything I had known before or since. So, what happened between you and your wife? Exar Kuhn is what happened. The Yama was inspired by Exar's promises of a new golden age. She wanted to join him. She came to me, pleading with me to throw aside what she called the decrepit trappings of the Jedi to join her in Exar's war. So, she fallen to the dark side? I hadn't thought so, not right then. I was too proud to believe that of her. I had trained her myself. I loved her. I pleaded with her to reconsider to think about all that she was throwing away, to think about what she would become. She would have none of it. Finally, in frustration, she attacked me. She drew her lightsaber and attempted to strike me down. It was a scene being repeated everywhere throughout the galaxy. Pupil against master. In my case, it was a long and terrible battle, but I defeated her. You mean you killed her? No, no. I had her at my mercy, disarmed and defenseless. She looked up at me and she knew. She knew I couldn't do it. That sounds familiar. It seems like the Jedi don't like killing their helpless prisoners. Like the name Kelmeo, Bagad, the Wafaifan, when Basil had the chance. But I heard and remember what she said. She seems so right that when she believes there's a chance to save me. But I should have. Sometimes I convince myself otherwise, but it's no use. She had fallen to the dark side when she raised her saber against me. And I let her go. To my shame, she went on to kill many Jedi during the war, until she herself was slain in the final battle. I grieved for her death, inevitable as it was, even as the Jedi Council put me on trial for my actions once the war was over. They put you on trial just because of what she did? I had trained the Yama against their wishes. I had failed to kill her when I had the chance, and she went on to kill others. You can't blame Not yourself for that. I had remained a Padawan throughout the war. A formality, perhaps, but with a trial, it had to be decided if I was worthy to become a Jedi at all. It was a travesty, of course. I told you that even the Jedi were capable of great injustices, didn't I? <sighs> but, Jolie, the Jedi have always had been fair and merciful, always the Jedi Knights of Justice. Seek to bring balance to the galaxy? Hell, they even gave me a chance, despite of who I am, being Darth Revan. But I deserve to be 
tried, they found me innocent. Even though I deserved every punishment and more, they let me go. Mitigating circumstances, they said. I deserved compassion, they said. They said I had learned wisdom the hard way. For all I had done during the war, they wished to raise me to full Jedi status at long last. That, that was when the Jedi left me. That was when they failed me. No, you're wrong, Jolie. You do deserve passion and compassion. For my pride? For my cowardice? Which do you think is the act more befitting the Jedi? They may have been able to forgive me. I could never forgive myself. And you still believe that love is worth the risk despite what has happened between you and your wife and the war? I... Yes, I do, I suppose. Does that surprise you? Oh, so long ago, lost in the winds, I suppose. Nobody cares what an old man believes anymore, do they? Uh, yes, they do. The task at hand. I would prefer to think of the present today. I understand, Charlie. We'll continue this in another time. I had no idea Jolly had to go through such a thing as well. Yeah, what do you want? Kandras, I want you to tell me more about the Mandalorian Wars, about me, and if there's any chance. The war we had with the Republic was supposed to be the most glorious battle in our history. But it was a very costly one. I guess we didn't think of how much we could lose to it. How much did you lose? There weren't many of us after that last battle. Mandalore himself was killed at the hands of the Jedi Revan. The best of us could not defeat him. After that last mean, battle, you mean? those of us that survived were stripped of our weapons, our armor, and our basilisks. The Republic's forces destroyed them while we were forced to watch. Those who hadn't fled earlier were left with nothing to call their own. No weapons, no armor. Only the honor of having fought in the battle we just lost. For many, this was not enough. While the rest of us were sent into exile on the outer rim, they tried to relive the old days, raiding worlds. They're nothing more than bandits now. And then you eventually came to Terrace? Yeah, I came to Terrace. And forcing for Davik was not stimulating. The gangs on Terrace and Davik's rivals were trash. They give no thrill in battle, no honor or glory in defeating them. It was like stepping on bugs. I sought worthy challenges, but the best that Terrace could offer were nothing to me. But I think now, with you... I may finally find opponents worth fighting. I will be honored. You have honored me. Maybe later I'll tell you more about what it was like to work for Dalek. For now, though, we should get on with our lives. Is there something else you want to know? Hey, Gag, um, do you have any adrenaline stimulants for me? Hey, don't worry. I think you've got enough there as it is. You don't want to overload yourself on stims. Otherwise, you might destroy your adrenal system. A real warrior knows his own limits and doesn't overestimate himself. Is there anything else you need? Not right now, Kenders. We'll talk later. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. We need to speak. Um, I'm going to have to try to restore some of your memory. Okay, but no, our conversation is not quite done yet. Ishk. So, you originally belonged to Revan, originally? Statement. Yes, Master. You created me shortly after you and your apprentice began your war to conquer the galaxy. I was sent on an assassination mission into Mandalorian space, but I was damaged and unable to return to you. Exclamation. I find this most distressing. I could certainly have protected you from the Jedi and your pupil's betrayal had I returned. It probably worked better out this way if you hadn't been there. Observation. You may be right, Master. This way we 
are reunited and neither of us has suffered permanent termination. Home governing? Well, I'm going to have to be honest with you. I may not be uh, exactly the Revan that you knew of the past. So how am I very much like Revan as you knew? Observation. You are different in many fundamental ways, Master. You have a concern for life that is unsettling. This cannot solely be caused by memory loss. I do not know how to explain it. Regardless, you do seem to be improved overall from the human I once knew. So, well, that's good to hear. Thanks, HK. So, um, do you know anything about the Star Forge that you could lend us to know anything about it? Answer. No, Master. You never did make me privy to any of the Star Forge's secrets. So, what can you tell me of Malag if I have billed you? Did I, in the past, mention anything of him? Oh, first if I introduce. Known what he would do to you, Master, I would have gladly removed his entrails right then. <laughs> so, um, explain to me why the meatbags refer reference you master, mentioned. It was you who programmed me thus, Master. Oh. Your pupil once asked me what I thought of him, and I informed him of his meatbag status. He was unimpressed, but you found the reference humorous. I did, did you I? Changed my programming so that I would continue to use the term. Drove your pupil to extreme lengths of frustration. So, Malik is the original meat bag? <laughs> I like that idea. Observation. Of course you do, Master. You did that as well. That would be our HK47. And thank you for supporting me despite of who I used to be and from when you used to be. I wanted to talk about me being Revan. It seems to me that if you don't really remember anything about being Revan, then it doesn't really matter anymore. You are who you are now, right? So it doesn't really bother you at all, Mission? I don't see the Sith Lord standing here. I see a friend who's been with us through thick and thin. Remember, Malik's the one who tried to destroy Karis. Big Z and I will stick by you. We owe you our lives. We won't desert you now. Thank you, Mission. It's good to know that you have my... that you support me as well. It is always good to have true friends to help you out, despite who you may used to be. Alright, now let's go to the store to grab some supplies. But best look on, the company is weakened. She's not dead, but captured. And from what Jolie said, Malik has more intentions of worse occasions for her than death. And that gives us time to try to find her, but we need to make sure that we don't arrive to, arrive to that place too late. Alright, so like I said folks, we're going to get some supplies beforehand to Corban. From what I've heard uh, through the conversations from Dad to Wayne and down from uh, the rumors of the people coming through some planets, it sounds like Corban is also having a Sif Ken Jedi Academy there. <sighs> What the? Dark Lord the Sith. What? Um, you mean Malak? How? 
how in the hell do you even know about that? How in the world do you even know who, who I used to be? How do you know that? Explain yourself. Sigaron, huh? You're with the exchange. So you're not exactly from the exchange then? Okay. We haven't exactly answered my question. So you, the one who's always been doing the business, work with David Kang, with the Evan Hog? So there has been predecessors before Kang? I guess that ruins your business work, huh? Just get to the point. How do you know about my true identity? We were at Manan at that last port, and you somehow placed a tracking device on my ship. Sources? What kinds of sources? Of course he would. And that's how you knew about my true identity then? And how does this exactly involve you if you think I am in this for vengeance? And you're just going to get these items to me? Well, I do got the credits to make a profit on that. So, your partner's name is Mika Dorian, eh? I'll check it out next time on Corbin. It's gonna be my next last dog to go there anyway. I'm not in this for vengeance just because you know about my identity, but I am going to kick Darth Malik's ass. Don't worry, I'll make sure that your part in this won't be forgotten. Much so right now. Huh. That was interesting.
All right. One knows you people probably remember that. These Gamoras guys that the agent told, uh, told me to find of one at the top. Bad uh, sadistic freaks that's on one of the planets that's Amanon, which we've already taken care of. And the other two are Kashyyyk and Tatooine, which is one of the main reasons, which is one main reason why I'm back in Tatooine. Thank you for letting us pass. All right, let's deal with these freaks.
Alright, and then let's go on and try searching in this area. But first, it's time to switch. <laughs> and empty nine will be leveling it up. Nothing around here yet. Okay, this hunter that we're searching for. Alright, let's see. Alright. Uh, uh, okay. Alright, here's this. The guy's name's Foreign. He travels with joy that hunts crate dragons at Tatooine, so the Hulas have already warned me to be careful about the joy of his company companion. So we're going to need to figure something out if I'm going to be going head to head against that guy. These weren't there before. We are definitely in the right place. In the Sand People territory. And that must be the joy of his companion. Alright, a voice like us disabled. I think we can use this against him. All right, let's see if we can check this out. Hmm. All right, this joint is going to lead us straight to foreign. A great dragon. Damn, this guy must be good if he does something like this. Wait, your name's Foreign? Oh my god. A pig, and it's... Ugh. A Gamorrean? If I have known about a Gamorrean, though... About Vorin, if he already, if I've forgotten about that, then somebody shoot me because I can't deal with this pig pace. Look, if you're foreign, then I've already uh, repro reprogrammed your joy to turn against you. Yeah, I'm not sure how something like you was able to kill a cray dragon like this. You have no idea how what kind of trouble and what kind of resource we had to do to kill this thing. So I'm not sure what kind of gadgets you did or that you must have done that on your own without any help. Either way, you're going down. So let's get this over with.
All right. A data pad. Someone has learned an inborn if you if you can understand the message about our arrival. Alright, let's kill this thing so we can get onward. Alright, looks like the droid has fulfilled his purpose of taking his own master down. Alright, that's fine by me. Like I said, folks, um, if there's a dark side point that's really beyond my control, uh, if that ha certainly happens. So, like I said, folks, if you see a dark side point, don't gain any ideas about this character becoming the villain, despite the past. It's not going to be a super villain, okay? It's going to be a custom character hero, okay? So sorry, folks. Alright. And more of those things. Level up time. Should be good.
Alright, now the killing the uh, guy is out of the way, we can get back to doing some shopping in this place. Yes, I do want something to buy. Do you have anything available for purchase? Alright, thank you. There we go, let's get rid of these stuff. Let's head back to the oven hall, get that and head back plan cores for Kashig. It's quite a surgeon dealing with foreign like that. Yeah, what do you want? Nothing right now, Kenders. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. I want to begin the fire simulation, HK for practice. Go ahead, HK. Statement. Simulation initiating. I need to be ready for a fire simulation because of the next time we can hang we're closer to Basila and maybe the last time flying up against the fighters. But until then, I'll be using the fire simulation.
Alright, AFK, okay. thank you for the fire simulation. Now to change out the weapons. So when did you go to Kashyyyk? Oh, that was not until many years later to tell the truth. I spent quite some time wandering the galaxy. So did the uh, just let you go after what happened? Why wouldn't they? I had refused my promotion to Jedi. I was at the Padawan who had left the Order, nothing more. I traveled from one civilized system to the next, never staying long. I don't even think I knew what I was searching for. It wasn't as if my travels were pleasant either. Plenty of folks who distrusted the Jedi after the war, or worse. Worse? What do you mean? What could be worse? If people were treating me with suspicion that they were looking at me with group beat, I don't know how many thought they could make use of me for their own ends. I got so sick of the treachery and deceit, I left the civilized parts of the galaxy and headed to centrally uncivilized parts. So that's why you. So that's when you went to Kashyyyk? Actually, I was on my way somewhere else when I crash landed on Kashyyyk. The ship I was using was a rust bucket. You survived a crash landing on Kashyyyk? I'd taken some damage passing through an unexpected asteroid field, as I recall. But I wasn't completely without some systems. I could still guide her a bit when I crashed. It wasn't what I would call the smoothest landing, especially considering I ended up smack in the depths of the Shadowlands. But I lived. So, why didn't you just fix your ship and go? You could have, you must have had the tools that you needed at that time to repair your ship. <laughs> I'm no mechanic. And besides, after you plunge nose first in the trunk of a five kilometer high tree, chances are you don't have much ship left. So you crashed, and you've been staying there ever since? Sure, why not? Seemed like an interesting enough place to spend a couple of decades exploring. How, how did you survive so long in, by, in the Shadowlands? That was a challenge at first. You've seen the kind of creatures that exist down there, and you missed the really big ones. I the actually glad I missed the big ones. For the, most part. the rest of the trip is keeping out of the way of most of the predators. Well, it couldn't have been easy. Oh, that's true. Still, most of the creatures grow accustomed to me, and I to them. At least none of them ever heard of a Jedi. <laughs> so the Wookiees didn't even mind your presence a bit? Oh, they did at first, oh yes. I can't say I was overly pleased to encounter a, a group of indigenous giant carpets either, I can assure you of that. You seem to be on fairly peaceful terms with them, from what I saw. Certainly didn't trust me at first. But you helped them? When I could, I would assist the few young ones who would get lost in the Shadowlands or attacked unexpectedly by the wildlife. I must say, for a while there, the Wookiees actually thought I was some kind of benevolent forest god. <laughs> it's amusing, really. I set them straight eventually. So, Wade. While you were there, why didn't you just stop the slave of the Wookiees then? You could have actually prevented a lot of problems, not just for the Wookiees, but for Sabar too. At first, when the slavers took to hunting down lone Wookiees in the fringes of the Shadowlands, I did my best to divert them. Later, when Shundar made his deal, I didn't see any point. I wasn't here to save them from their own sad follies, after all. It wasn't at all bit primitive for you? Not really. Kashyyyk is a place you can feel very small in. It felt good to devote my time to helping people and living simply. 
and didn't receive any news from the outside world from Kashyyyk? What can I say? I did it all for the Wookiees. The Wookiees? The Wookiees. Well, okay, maybe I needed some time on a quiet and remote planet, but if you ever need a friend, incredibly strong airball isn't a bad call. <laughs> you, well, you seem quite fond of them. I suppose I am, in a way, despite the spell. For a race of gardeners, they have developed quite interestingly. Gardeners? You remember the alien computer, correct? Cash How can I forget? I had a feeling that Joy was hiding something. Or at least that's what I'm thinking. But I'm an old man who's had a long time to develop that opinion, so don't argue with me. I'm not planning anyway, to. We should be moving along, don't you think? Set around this long in the Shadowlands, attack with each other. <laughs> we'll talk later then, Jolie. How may I be of assistance to you, Adora? I was wondering if we could talk, Johnny. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Actually, nothing right now. Perhaps later? Of course. If there is anything else, I am here to help. Side, uh, Darius really is gone. I should have known something would have gone wrong. That safe haven wouldn't be safe any longer. All right, next stop is Kashyyyk. Don't worry, Jedi Master. So Datooine, I'll make Malak pay for what has happened to Datooine and Terrors, and for all the innocence that's been suffered by him. I'll make sure of it. And I'll also sort of pay my crimes for what I did as Darth Revan, even though I can't exactly remember all of them. I swear to you. And I'll rescue Basila, so don't worry, and hang tight. So this is so the last one is the shapeshifter, so he'll be probably in the Shadowlands. Shapeshifters can appear in many forms, and in any creature, any person, and anything. So, so tracking him down is not going to be easy, especially if he's going to be high in the Shadowlands. In other words, what I need to do, I need to keep an eye out for anything that looks suspicious that is unusual. Got something on your mind? I want to ask you something else then, Jolie. So if you like Keshig so much, why did you want to leave? I know we are, but I just so I find it hard to believe that you let the Wookiees just go on some great adventure that this is supposed to be. Not that it has been anything fun, mind you. Oh, for God's sakes. Can you just answer the question for once? You just keep quiet there, you. I've had to put up with all your busy body questions, haven't I? Now you listen to a story, damn it. <clears throat> oh, yes, the story. <laughs> you almost made me forget about it. Let's try, but I'm a battle just yet. Oh, screw you. <laughs> now, a young man sees a terribly venomous snake in his small village. Nervous, he watches the snake carefully into the leaves. The young man follows the snake into the forest. He clears the branches out of its path and helps it over obstacles. He even works to keep it fed. This is a very long story. Shush! Lengthy nights pass, and still the young man continues to follow the snake. He even follows it into the sands of the great desert. In the desert, the snake eventually grows hungry. It turns and bites the young man. Its poison quickly working its way into his system. Finally, curious, the snake looks at the boy as he lays dying and asks, Why 
were you foolish enough to follow me all the way out into the desert? The boy looks back and replies, Did I follow you? <laughs> Sorry. I thought I was leading you away from everyone else. And then he died. Wait, am I supposed to be the snake? Well, now, that's what I wanted to see for myself. <sighs> Look, I'm not a snake, okay? I can assure you of that. Well then, let's hope you're not the young man either. I've told you before that you have a destiny before you. This does not mean, however, that your future is already written. They are not the same thing. You have the choice of which direction you take your destiny in. More than engine sucking Andor, certainly. But even he had a choice. So far, you've chosen to take the lighter path. Can you stay that course, even through the challenges ahead? We'll have to wait and see. Indeed we will. I'm not judge you or tell you which path to take. I'm here ready to offer you my help, should you ask for it. All right, I do then. that because I think it's important. More important than remaining in my home and pretending the galaxy doesn't exist. That's why I'm here. Well then, Julie. <sighs> I have thought about a lot of this. Destiny I am seem to have before me. It's not the first time I've heard this. I've heard this saw it while well, I began this game since back at Terrace, the old man in the village. He seemed to think I have a destiny before me as well. And I think I'm becoming an understanding of this destiny now. So thank you, Jolie. And I'm glad that you have came along and that you did. Thank you. Thank you, Jolly. I hope things will turn out for me as well. Nothing right now, Jane Kenners. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. <laughs> Alright, time to find the shapeshifter. Let's get you a level up, Johnny. Okay, now what do we know about this shapeshifter character? Alright. He seems to be an alien species named Rulon. He's already, and the Rulon's have already told me to look for Kashyyyk, which brings us to speed right here. Now, like I said, guys, he probably been hiding and do some hunting in the Shoutlands. It's probably why he's so dangerous among the three. So I need to be very careful how to deal with shapeshifters, and I know how dangerous these guys can be. And not easy to be messed with, nor easy to deal with. All right. Sawbar mission. Let's go for a low hunting.
No, it seems to me we got ourselves some kinraps to kill. Seeing them, these uh, three, three legged freaks. Let's move on to the next suit creeps. Alright, now it's time to go back down to the shower lines one more time. Hopefully this will be the last time to be doing this. Shower lines is not my favorite place to be in after a bit of experience of having to deal with creatures and how and what that alien is, machine has been doing there. Another thing is that I figure out is that my dark meat that being Darth Revan must have known about the what could have happened, so that's why he placed this machine there, along with the star map. <sighs> Another thing I need to be rectified about this. And it's not easy going to find this uh, guy, so. That Wookie wasn't here before. Okay. According to the data pad I found, Garo is already dead, shapeshifter. Now reveal your true form. What? Bastard. How dare you take the form of. You don't, your tricks won't fool me, you Lulan. You're not going in to use my friend, one of my friends is impersonating faces. Uh, now he turns into a, a threat rock. Ends now. Ah. 
What the? Oh no, we can lose him? He's gotta be somewhere. Oh man, this is gonna be difficult. Okay, I got fifty fifty shot here. Dang it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, that's an, that's all those uh, psychopaths, psychopaths that I that we need to find. All right, let's head back to the Evan Hog. Probably, of course, to my non too. Uh, should so I'll be able to. Deliver that report to the Hulan engine. One last time seeing the Shadowlands. All right, let's get out here. Be ready to be long gone from this Shadowlands forever. And after Manon, then I should get some more information about the, the Morn Hulans from that nation. It's been strange that the data pass shows that whoever gave the message to these guys uh, seems to know that we're coming from them and they were prepared for us. Something's not right here, and I think that agent knows what. Fair question about this.
I believe it's high time that I changed my fine style. I have mentioned this when I add the dead wing that I'm going to add to change my fine style. But the first I need to select. Originally, uh, my banner is supposedly going to be um, being a Corsair, so, but since I'm a Jaguarian, might as well choose something that best suits me. The green lightsaber mixed with blue, nothing better than that. I like it, Ned. This will suit me just fine. I've always favored in dual sabers because it gives you an open more freely. Now let's head to Monon. For me to be able to talk to that guy alone, for me to be able to talk to him, I need to be uh, talking to him alone, approaching him in person. That was the deal if I wanted information from this guy. What the? Ah, so we meet again, Candorus. It has been quite a long time. You know this guy, Candorus? Do you know him? He, he was the warrior under my command after the Battle of Althir. Althir, that battle, you told me about it. Is this true, Candorus? I, I did what was prudent at the time. If I had not done it, the battle would have... The battle would have been won anyway. I am tired of your excuses, Candorus. I have spent years trapping you down since the clans were banished, and I will not rest until I had my vengeance. Boy, you... Look, man, I'm not going to let you kill Candorus, nor will let you harm him. If you wanted to fight him, you had to fight me. But what are you going to be doing about it? I challenge you, Candorus. I challenge you. Oh, 
challenge you to fight the fight you fled that day above Althea. In the doomed seas of Tatooine, I will be waiting for you. I have spread the news of the challenge since I learned you had landed on this world. All the surviving Mandalorian clans know of what I do here, and that we shall meet on Tatooine to settle this debt of vengeance once and for all. If you fail to meet me there, you shall be stripped of all honor and forever cast out of our society. It will be you and me alone in the doomed seas of Tatooine. A final battle that can only end in death. I shall be waiting for you there, Kendris. Not if I have to say anything about it. I'll have to talk to Kendris about this later as soon as I get this. Mean with Hula's agent over with. Kendra's head back to the oven hog, and Kendra's you and I need the target as soon as I get back. All right, here's the Rodian guy. Mission joining, head back to the ship. I'll meet you guys there. Okay, Hulus. How 
How in the world do you know that? That's none of your business, punk. So what happens now? I'm not doing any more of your business, but I did finish the text that I have already you have sent me. If you really are what you people say you are, then you sh this shouldn't be some surprise what's going to become between me and Malik. I can't complete this Sunatar mission. Datooine is destroyed. I never want to come to Datooine anyway. Not quite. Fauna, Dazor, at Tatooine is dead. If our Gudor is dead, as you already know about. Grumpog of Kashyyyk is dead. What task? What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Agent? Those three are the overseers of, of your clan? You used me. You slimy piece of shit. You used me? No, I don't think so. Nobody plays me for a fool. 
and you'll pay for this, Hulus. Agreed. So would you have this confrontation happen? Since you've played me for a fool, you son of a bitch, I'm not going to play by your rules anymore. I will find you at the Moon Dune Sea. You can bet your ass on that. Nobody plays me for a fool or use me to get what they wanted for their selfish desires and get away with it. It's no one of those three uh, were being warned. It's because of him that... Alright folks, I'm going to be cutting this short, so this has gone on spy, these spies sign off, we'll be right back after these messages, and this is the great start at the start of in the first episode of the Act 3, so you can bet there will be more to come after this one. So like I said, has gone on spy, these spies sign off, we'll be right back after these messages.